Hey everybody, Matthew Morris, MM Wood Studio. I'm here working on this Nakashima inspired dining table and this video is an excerpt from the chapter on how to make these butterfly keys and get them inlaid into the tabletop. So in this table I am making not just one size but two, three, and four different sizes of butterfly keys. I'm at the table saw here and I've got a whole bunch of parts here that I'm going to make into butterfly keys. Now let me walk you through that process. Over at the bandsaw, I cut my piece of East Indian rosewood to length. I had measured already out how long I needed the piece to be to get all of my butterfly keys in it. And this way I have some extra I can always use later. After that, I then resawed it just a little bit thicker than the final dimensions I want for the depth of my butterfly keys. And then the joint there, I flattened one face and got one edge nice and square. And then if my joints are in planar mode, I make sure that both surfaces are coplanar to each other. And then at the bandsaw, I cross cut the piece into three parts. One section for the three butterfly keys at the same time and then the other two sections for the larger butterfly keys and I will pull the smaller butterfly key out of the section where I'm going to get the four. And then I rip those blocks to the width I would need. So two pieces for the inch and a half wide butterfly keys and then the larger two butterfly keys after that. And then lastly, one last one at one inch wide. And then I cut all of those to length. And then over the table saw, with my bevel gauge set at 16 degrees, I made sure my blade was at 16 degrees. I attached a sub fence to my miter gauge and made one initial cut so I knew where everything start. And that's where I am now. So um, right here I have one of my uh, pieces of plywood that I used to lay out my butterfly keys and I've drawn on it in pencil where the angles for the butterfly key are. So this guy is at 16 degrees. I'm going to do this one first since there's three of them. Since I have this cut here at 16 degrees, what I'm going to do is take my piece of plywood and bring that up right to the edge. And then I'm going to take another piece of plywood, bring that up against there, pull this away, and then I want to clamp this down. And now, when I take a piece over here, bring it right up, it's in perfect alignment. And we'll make some test cuts to double check. And during my test cuts, what I did was I just kept raising the blade very slow until I got the two corners to just barely miss from meeting. Once I had that, then I proceeded to take my pieces and cut one side of every single piece. With one side cut, put it down, and you can see, if you were looking like this, that since I removed some material over here, that when I make this cut again, it's going to leave a little bit of a flat spot in the corner here. So I need to move this over just a touch. So that's why I batched a whole bunch of these at once. So I'm going to take my dovetail or butterfly key, bring it over, hold it down, loosen all my clamps, and find a new spot to clamp down my stop. And then when I cut the other side off, I'll get nice, crisp corners on that side as well. Now for the largest one, we're going to change the angle of the blade to 10 degrees. Now if that change in angle, I'm also going to move over the fence. Move it over a touch. 
come up and make sure that the blade has room around it and I'm not going to hit anything metal and then lock it back down. And the reason for this is I want to make sure I have a nice clean cut here and I know exactly where the blade enters into this fence so I can line everything up and I have support for my piece. And now I'll make a cut into my sub fence so I can see exactly where the blade enters the fence. Now that I know where it enters the fence, I'll take the part from the plywood, line that up, and that clamped down, I'm now going to start taking test cuts until I can get the two points to just about intersect on my test piece. And when I hit an intersection point that I like, then I go ahead and make my first cut to one side. Once I have that, I will just move the fence over just a touch to make sure I don't get that flat spot on the edges and then take two more passes and finish off my dovetail. And for both the four inch and the one inch butterfly keys, I'm gonna be cutting these at 14 degrees. And again, I'm gonna adjust the sub fence on my miter gauge so that I have a brand new, fresh place to cut. And with my blade lowered, I'll make a pass into my sub fence so I know exactly where the blade enters the fence. So now, just like before, I'm gonna take my piece of plywood up and find just where I'm hiding that cut, bring over my stop, clamp that down, and then start taking test passes on my plywood piece until I get the corners just to meet. Now readjust your fence so when you come back at the piece you are just nipping off the edge of your piece to create a perfect butterfly key. Now for this little one inch guy the setup is pretty much the same except when we cut it we're going to do a, something a little bit different. Now this positioning is really key when doing this. So I'll take my little guy, get him set up here, take a pencil, and with the eraser I'm going to hold the piece down as I slide the miter gauge across and make my cut. And just like all the others, move your fence over just a little bit and take those last two passes. Now, if you need to clean up your butterfly keys a little bit because, well, there's just a little bit of material in between everything, I like to do that with a chisel. So I'll just come in from one direction, slowly come down, flip around, and come in from the other direction. So that's how I make my butterfly or dovetail keys for this project. And that's how I've been making them for years. Now you can also make these on a bandsaw or you can cut them by hand. However you do them is great. Now I personally like doing them off the table saw because well, I get pretty much a finish off of a really clean sharp blade that needs very little work if any of the parts are exposed to get sanded um, to a great finish where it's really nice and smooth to the touch. Um, I also, as you saw in the video, spend a lot of time making sure that I get that blade to the perfect height or just really close to it to make sure that these two parts here, these angles meet just in, at the right spot. Now, if you're interested in this Nakashima dining table project, I have a playlist up here as well as in the description below for all the other videos in this build. And of course, it's available on the school site as well. So as always, please subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, and hit that thumbs up button if you like this video. If you're watching this on Facebook, hit the like button, share in your timeline, and head over to the MM Wood Studio page and like us there as well. And as always, everyone, have a great week in the shop.